Hello everyone, welcome to our medical statistics class. I'm King from Department of Statistics, School of Public Health. In today's class, we will learn Chapter 7. The title for Chapter 7 is Now Parametric Statistics. Till now, we have already learned several methods for hypothesis test. For example, one sample Z test, one sample T test, paired samples T, -t test, two independent samples T test, and ANOVA. And all of the procedures involving statistical inferences introduced thus far have an underlying assumption of normality. So that is, we generally assume that the samples are drawn from distributions which are normal. So we can Think about that. What we have learned in chapter 5, that is one sample statistical inference. And then we say that the methods used in chapter 5 is based on one sample test for the mean of the normal distribution with known or with an unknown variance. So we can find that the methods for hypothesis test we have learned are based on the assumption of normal distribution. So that means the population which the samples are drawn from must be must follow normal distribution. So that is the precondition for the hypothesis methods we have learned. However, what do we do if it appears that the mortality, the, the normality assumption is not valid? So that means if the population does not follow a normal distribution, what can we do? Of course, we cannot use the hypothesis test methods what we have learned before anymore because all of the methods are based on normal distribution. So if the population is not follow a normal distribution, we cannot use these methods anymore. So at this time, there are two possible causes of action. The first one is to transform the data so that the normal theory assumptions are met. So that means we need to transform the numbers what we got in the question into into um, the methods that they follows a normal distribution. But sometimes that is very difficult for us because we need to find some special mathematics way to transform the data. And most oftenly we cannot find a useful way to do that. So we have a second choice, that is to develop a body of statistical methods that assumes little about the sampling distribution. So that means we have a new method, a new kind of methods, which is not based on the normal distribution. So no matter 
what the what distribution the population follows. We can use these methods to solve the questions about hypothesis test. So we call this kind of methods now parametric or distribution free statistics. So that is what we need to learn in chapter seven. Now parametric statistics. So now we can know a non parametric test can be used when the data of the population does not follow a normal distribution. And non parametric tests are also used when data are ordinal scaled or ranked. So for the ordinal data, if we want to do the hypothesis test, we can use non-parametric tests. Non-parametric tests are also used when a quick or preliminary data analysis is required. So non-parametric tests are commonly used in our medical statistics. So here, let's think about the advantage and disadvantages about these methods. The non-parametric methods have several appealing characteristics. The first one, non-parametric tests are often quicker and easier to apply than their competing parametric counterparts. So that means in non-parametric tests, the calculation will be easy. And the second one is that the parametric methods are easy to understand. And the third one, these methods can be applied to a wider range of problems than their parametric counterparts. So we have mentioned that when we use a t-test or z-test, these methods must have a special precondition. That is, the data should follow a normal distribution. And in this methods, in the procedure of the hypothesis test, we need to, need to compare the parameters among different groups. For example, in t-test or z-test, we use mu1 equals to mu2, for example, as the h0. So we can find that mu, this is the mean of the population. And we said that mean of the population is a kind of parameter. So here we can find that in no matter z test, t test, or an ANOVA. Actually, what we need to compare is their parameters. But in no parametric tests, this methods has a different precondition. The data does not follow a normal distribution. And we don't need to compare the parameters among different groups. Actually, in non-parameter, uh, in non-parametric test, what we need to compare is their distribution. 
is their distribution locations, not the parameters. So this method can be applied to a wider range of problems. But all of these points are the advantages of the non-parametric tests. So what are the disadvantages? Of course, these methods have some disadvantages. For example, the first one, when we do the non-parametric test, some important results can be easily missed when the assumptions are fulfilled for a competing parametric procedure. So that means if the data rarely follows a normal distribution, but we use non-parametric non non test instead of the parametric test. For example, instead of the Z test or T test, we will lose some information in the data. And I think I forgot something. So here, when we are talking about the parametric statistics or the parametric tests, Actually, we mean Z test, T test, or ANOVA, that is F test. So, the parametric methods include Z test, T test, and F test. And the non parametric test includes rank sum test what we will learn today, and k-square test. That is a method we will learn in next class. So here, we said that if the variable follows a normal distribution, and we need to compare two groups of the data, for example, x and y, both of the two variables follow a normal distribution. And we want to compare the difference, the difference between x and y. We need to use, for example, we can use t test. So that is parametric test. But if we don't use t test, instead of that, we use the non-parametric test we will lose some point, we will lose some informations. Why? I will explain that for you. So think about this. In chapter seven, we will, uh, I will introduce you a method of non-parametric tests, which is called rank sum test so rank that is the order of a number from the smallest to the biggest so for example we have a group of numbers that is the numbers of a variable x for example 1.1 1.3, 1.7, 1 1.9. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 numbers for x. And here, if we have the original data of x, we can use t test or z test or the other parametric tests. But if x does not follow a normal distribution, we need to use no parametric test. And at this time, we have to transform the original data X into a new data. So in rank sum test, we need to use the rank of X. So we need to order 
all the numbers for x from the least to the largest. And we will find that the rank for number 1, the rank is 1. And 1 1.3 is rank is 2 and 3 and 4. And here in rank sum test, we need to compare the data which is consisted with the rank of all the original data of X, not the original data directly. So we can find that the, or the original data, the first original number for x is 1.1 .1, but in a non-parametric test we transform this number into 1 the rank of that number and number 2 the number should be 1.3 but we transform this number into 2 and the third number is 1.7 when transform it into 3 we will find that in the original data of x, the difference of the first two numbers is 0 0.2 and the difference between the second and the third numbers are 0 0.4 but we will find that if we analyze the new data which is the rank of the original data we will find that the difference are equal. The difference of each two numbers are equal. We will find that the difference of the first two numbers is 1. And the difference between number 2 and number 3 is 1, 2. So we will find that the really difference is changed. That's because we transform the original data into a new data. So, in non-parametric tests, we need to transform the data into a new one. So, some informations will be lost. So, if the data can match the precondition of a parametric test, we must use the method of parametric test. However, if you use the null parametric test, it will cause that some important informations will be low, will be lost. So that is the first disadvantage. And the second one is the methods order the original measurements according to their magnitudes and use the ranks as a substitute for the original values. This results in a loss of information, power, and sensitivity. So that is similar with the first point. So they are the these are the advantages for a non-parametric test. Okay, so here in chapter seven, we will learn three methods for non-parametric test, and it's based on the rank of the data. So we call it as rank sum test. So that means we will learn three types of rank sum test. The first one is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. And the second one is two sample test of central tendency. Actually, that is two independent samples rank some test and the last one is Crasco wireless test so that method is used for the comparisons of more than two groups okay so now let's start 
the first method of rank sum test. That is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. So you need to notice that this method is called rank sum test. And the test statistic in this method is the capital T. It's different from what we need to use in t-test. t-test is a parametric test. But this one, the capital T, is a method of no parametric test. So they are different. They are different. And the rank sum test is one of the non-parametric tests. So we have so many methods for non-parametric tests. But in our textbook, we only need to learn a simple methods of non-parametric test. That is rank sum test. Okay. So the first the first method, the first type of rank sum test is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. That is used for one sample test of central tendency or used for paired data or paired samples. So what's the meaning of paired data or what's the meaning of the paired samples? I think we have learned that before. We have learned that in chapter six, we have mentioned the paired samples t-test, right? So we said that that method of t-test is used for um, paired matched design, right? For example, the, the twin brothers, the elder and the, the younger, we want to compare the difference between the elder brother and the, the younger brother. So that is paired samples. So it's the same in chapter seven. So this method can be used for two conditions. The first one is what we have learned, the paired data. But the difference between this method and paired sample t-test is the data does not follow a normal distribution. And this method can be used for another condition, that is one sample test. So it's similar with what we have learned in chapter 5, one sample t-test or one sample z-test. So the difference between the rank sum test and one sample z-test or one sample t-test is the data does not follow a normal distribution. So it's similar with what happened in paired data. So we can find that uh, the Wilcoxon signed rank test is used for one sample test or paired samples test, but the data cannot follow a normal distribution. And this time we can use the rank sum test. Okay, so in parametric tests, the mirror of the center of distribution of a variable is its mean. We already use mu to represent the certain of the distribution of a population. We use x bar to represent the certain of the distribution of a sample. So we said that in parametric test, we need to compare the population mean. We, we need to compare mu. <coughs> So through the comparison of the mu's, we can find out if there is any significant differences among different groups. 
But we said that in ransom test, we do need to compare the parameters. So in no parametric test, the center of the distribution is mirrored by the median, not the variable. So that means in no parametric test, we need to compare the medians of different groups, not the means of different groups. So that is a difference from what happened in parameter statistics. So that means in the step one of the hypothesis test procedure, we need to um, make the hypothesis like this. H0 should be median equals to another median. And H a should be not equal. Here, we don't use mu anymore. We use median. We use medians in no parametric tests. So here, if I assumed xi is a sample from the distribution of variable x with which to test H0 is the medians, the median of x equals to a given median. We use m0 to represent the given median. So it's similar with what happened in parametric test, in one sample test. So do you remember that? In one sample z test or one sample t test, at h0 is mu equals to mu zero. So here, mu zero is the given population mean. And this mu means the population mean of x, which is not given. So it's similar, right? The, the difference, the only difference is here in the now parametric test, we need to compare the median, not mu. Okay, so if this is the H0, the null hypothesis, what is the HA, the alternative hypothesis? Yes, the null hypothesis should be not equal. So that is similar with what happened in par parametric test. Okay. So here, we have already know what is the step one in hypothesis test. But in ransom test, we need to calculate a different, a new test statistic. So how can we get the test statistic in non-parametric test? This is the procedure for the calculation of the test statistic. The first one, we need to calculate, we need to compute the difference between x and the given median, m0. And then we need to know the little n, the sample size, is equal to the number of non zero differences. I will explain what's the meaning of that later. Number two, ignoring signs. Assign ranks to the absolute differences from smallest to largest. Assign equal differences. The average of the ranks which will be assigned if the differences have not been tied. Here is a special word, TAS. TAS means when we calculate the difference and if the difference 
and sing. We call it a tie. Okay, so here we need to omit all zero differences. So that means if the different the difference equals to zero, we need to remove that. We need to omit that. Number three, attach the signs of the original differences to the ranks. So that is the procedure for us to get the test statistic. Number four, we need to calculate two rank sums. The first one we use t plus to represent the sum of all positive ranks. And we need to use t minus to represent the sum of all negative ranks. So we can have two numbers of t. The first one is t plus and the second one is t minus. But we all know that in the hypothesis test, we need only one test statistic. So we need to choose one from these two t values, t plus and t minus. So which one can we choose? Please notice that either of the two is okay. So that means you can choose t plus or you can choose t minus. The conclusion should be the same no matter which one you choose. They will get the same conclusion. But notice that maybe the number the numbers of these two are not the same. Most often they are not the same, but you will find that they will get the same conclusion in the hypothesis test. So you can choose either one of the two. Number five, consult table A3 to determine the critical region. Rejection, reject H0 if it equals or is more extreme than the critical value. I will explain that later. Okay, so here we have already know the procedure for us to calculate the test statistic. Next one is an example. You can read it by yourself. Okay, I think you have already finished that. Please notice notice that this method of no no parametric test in chapter seven it are used when the data do not follow a normal distribution. So we assume all the examples, all the questions which are shown in chapter seven. The data does not follow the normal distribution. But how can we know that whether a data can, uh, whether a data follow a normal distribution or not? Do not worry about that. In our test, we will tell you whether the data follow a normal distribution or not directly. So that means if you need to use a method of t-test or z-test. We will tell you that the data follows a normal distribution. So if you can't find the words like that, you can't find any information about whether the data follows a normal distribution or not, that means it does not follow a normal distribution. So you need to use the method of non-parametric test. For example, in this question, in this example, you can not find the information about the normal distribution. So 
we need to use non-parameter test. Okay, so here we can find that um the median height among young men in this age group is currently larger than sixty nine point seven. So that means this number. What's the meaning of that? That means this number is the median. That is the given median. So that means M0 is actually 69.7. So this is the given median. So all we need to do is to compare the sample with the given median. And we can find that there is only one sample in this question. We can find a random sample of 20. So that means there is a single sample in this question. And the sample is consisted with 20 young men. So that means the little n, the sample size is 20. So this is the one sample test, a question about one sample test. But you will find that If we don't tell you the data follows a normal distribution, you need to use the null parametric test. So this is the one sample run sum test. And in our textbook, it was called Wilcoxon signed rank test for one sample test. Okay, so here, the question is, test whether the median height of young men in this groups is larger than 69.7 inch at alpha equals to 0 0.05. Actually, I want you to test not larger than. I want you to do the test of uh, different from because larger than is a question about one sided test but here I want you to do the question about the two sided test so let's change it test whether the median of height is different from 69.7 okay so here Let's do the hypothesis test. Step one, H0. We have mentioned that H0 is median equals to the given median M, M0. That is 69.7. And HA is not equal. Alpha equals to 0 0.05. That is the same with the other <coughs> hypothesis test. And in step two, we need to calculate the test statistic. And we can use the procedure we have mentioned before to get the test statistic. And how can we do that? I list all the numbers in a table. So here, this is the sample x, right here. I list all of these 20 numbers in the first column of the table. So here we have 20 numbers of the head. And here, this is D means difference. And that is the difference between each number and M0. That is 69.7. So that means we need to use each number of x minus 60, 69.7. And the result is the difference. Here we can get the differences of the 20 numbers. So you will find that it's similar with what we did in paired samples t-test, right? Do you remember that in chapter 6, 
in the pair samples t test, when we compare before and after, we need to calculate the difference between default before and after. So it's the same, but the difference is we don't calculate the difference of one number of before with the other number of after. We have the same number. That is the given median, 69.7. And we need to use all the numbers in the given sample minus that given M0. So that is the difference. Okay. Next one. Now we have uh, calculated all the differences. Let's clean it. And this time, we need to arrange the differences in order of magnitude, ignoring signs. We will find that in all of these differences, some numbers are negative and some numbers are positive. So here, in rank sum test, we need to transform the data into its rank. So this is the data. We need to transform the data into its corresponding ranks. But when we order the numbers, when we transform the, not the data, we need to ignore its signs. So actually, we order the absolute value of the differences from the smallest to the largest. We use the absolute value without the signs. Okay, so let's order the numbers. So the first one, let's find the smallest absolute value in the differences. We will find that the smallest number is, if we use the absolute value, we will find that the smallest number is zero. But here is an important, uh, an important point. Please do not forget that. Do not forget that. When they order the numbers from the smallest to the largest in the Wilcoxon signed rank test, if we find that the difference equals to zero, we need to omit it. We need to omit the zero. So we don't need to rank this number. So we can remove it. But please notice that if we remove a zero from all the differences, the sample size should be n minus one. We have n numbers, but now we omit an, a zero. So the sample size should be n minus one. So if we have another zero, we need to omit this zero too. And the sample size should be n minus two. Okay, so let's clean it. If we exclude the zero from all the numbers of differences, and in the rest of the numbers, which one is the smallest? We will find that this one. 0 0.2, that is the smallest. So its rank is one. That is the, that is the smallest number, so its rank is one. And after that, what is the second number? Oh, I find that the second number is 0 0.4. So its rank should be two, right? But we find that here we have another 0 0.4. So two numbers, they are the same, equals to 0 0.4. So actually, 
The two numbers should be ranked as two and three, no matter which one is two. But the rank of these two numbers should be two and three. So they have the same differences. So they have the same ranks. And we can call it a tie. So that is a tied number. So when we have a tied number, we can use the average of the ranks. That means the rank should be two and three. And here we use the average of these two numbers as the rank. So its rank should be two minus three divided by two. So that is 2.5. So we can find that for these tight numbers, they have the same rank, which is 2.5. Okay, so next one. We have already ordered three numbers. That is one, 2.5 and 2.5. And these two numbers should be number two and number three. So the next one should be ranked as four. And the next number is 0 0.8 after 0 0.4, right? That is the next number. So it should be ranked as four. And the next one is the 1.2, so its rank is 5. And the next one is 1.7. But we can find two 1.7. So we do the same thing. We need to calculate the average rank for these two numbers. So we can find that the other for these two numbers should be six and seven. So we use the average 6.5 for these two numbers. And the next one should be ranked as uh, eight, right? Okay, so who is the next? Who is the next? Oh, this one. Minus 2.2. That should be the eighth one from the smallest, right? But we can find that this is a negative number. But we have mentioned that when, when we are uh, ordering the numbers, we used uh, the absolute value of the number. So its absolute value is 2.2. So its rank should be eight. That is the rank. Now please ignore the sign. I will explain what's the meaning of the sign later. We, you, you just need to know its rank is eight. That is enough now. And the next one should be ranked as nine. And which one is the next? Which number is the next? Which difference is next? is 2.4 after 2.2 right and we still use the absolute value of the number and we, we can find that we have two numbers of 2.4 so they have the same rank we still use the average of the ranks as it's called corresponding rank so these two numbers should be ranked number nine and number 10. So we use its average, so that should be 9.5. Oh, it's not 9.5, where I make a mistake. Because there is still another number, right? Here, so we find 
three tied numbers minus 2.4 minus 2.4 and positive 2.4 so here when we rank the numbers we, we have mentioned that we need to use the absolute value so we find that this these three numbers they have the same absolute value so they must have the same rank so their rank should be 9 10 and 11. so we need to calculate the average the average should be 10. so here we can find that there's ranks are the same that is 10 right okay the rest of the numbers are the same we just rank all the numbers from the smallest to the biggest with the with its absolute value and transform the differences into its rank and next one we have already transform the difference the differences into ranks without its signs without this sign so what can we do by using the signs here we need to do that we need to attach the signs of the original differences to the ranks so that means if the difference is a positive number its corresponding rank is a positive num number two however if the difference is a negative number its corresponding rank should be negative so by using this method we attach the signs of the original differences to the ranks okay so hope so next one we can get the test statistic but how can we get the test statistic with all of the ranks let's take a 10 minutes rest <laughs> 